what's going on YouTube. So basically, since we first started reviewing cars, people have been requesting Volkswagens, but we haven't been able to review any. That is until now. So for our first Volkswagen, we have one of their most important products, the 2020 Tiguan. Of course, we do want to take a second to specially thank our friends at Don Jacobs Volkswagen for making this review possible. And we encourage you to visit them in person or via their website for all your Volkswagen needs. So with that all said, let's see what's new for 2020. So we'll get things started here with the exterior design. Um, now the Tiguan doesn't have any changes in this area for 2020, so you'll continue to have the typical clean and simple Volkswagen grille. Now most of the models do have this look. However, if you get the top end R-Line model, uh, you have a slightly revised look here in this part, um, but the big difference is down below, the lower fascia will be totally changed uh, to look more aggressive. As far as your headlights, you won't get LED headlights unless you go for that very top end SEL Premium R-Line, um, but it, the lower models will still have an LED daytime running light. And then dropping down here, uh, the SEL and up will come with a halogen fog light. Now next up here, we have the wheels. Um, now Volkswagen, one thing they nicely do is skip over hubcaps and steel wheels. They go straight to alloys, 17 inches on the S and the SE. Um, when you go up to this SEL, you get these 19 inch alloys, which I think look very nice. And finally, at the top end trim, you have 20 inch alloys, which is definitely very large for the class. And then as far as your mirrors, they are heated on the SEL trim level and up. And one of your 2020 changes is that blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert are now standard across all of the trim levels. So here at the rear of the Tiguan, I have to say this is a very conservative design as with pretty much any Volkswagen, um, but I'm actually a big fan of it because it does have very nice componentry. Um, so one of those nice components is that it does have standard fully LED tail lights, even the reverse light is LED. And down below, we do also have dual exhaust pipes, which really helps to give it a very premium look. Now normally we don't talk about the warranties, but this is a pretty important 2020 update, and that's now that the uh, previous six-year warranty has been reduced to a four-year warranty for the basic and powertrain. Uh, however, Volkswagen has compensated for that by giving you complimentary maintenance. Now another area where this Tiguan has been updated for 2020 is here at the safety systems. Uh, it now has forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection as standard across the entire lineup. Now, if you want to go for the SEL trims or higher, that's going to throw in adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist. And then if you want to go for the highest end model, the SEL Premium R-Line, that's also going to throw in auto high beam headlights. But anyway, guys, that sums up all the exterior of this 2020 Tiguan. So now let's go ahead and hop inside and see how it compares to the competition. So walking up to this 2020 Tiguan, you will find Volkswagen Smart Entry System, standard on all but the very base model. Uh, you will also find remote start here on the key fob if you go for the SEL trim or up. And of course, like most vehicles, uh, all you have to do to unlock the door is just grab it since there is a sensor. All right, so checking out the interior of this Tiguan. Um, as you can see, there hasn't really been much in the way of changes in the design for 2020, but there have been some updates to the features, which we'll get into as we go through the video. Now, as far as your interior material and color options, you do have a decent number of selections. So what you'll be looking at is cloth seating on the S trim in Titan Black or Storm Gray. Uh, when you go for the SE or the SEL, um, that's where you'll get VTEX leatherette in black or gray. Now finally, when you go for the SEL Premium R-Line, which is your top trim level, that comes with real leather seating in those same two colors, plus a reddish brown and black combination. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is nicely finished. So as you can see, you do have a leather trim that goes through the armrest as well as above it, and the top area is nicely padded. As far as your windows, they are one-touch automatic for all four. 
And coming down here to your seat, Volkswagen nicely throws in their 10-way power adjusting driver's seat, standard on all but the very base model, and if you go for the top trim, you would have memory seats as well. And then like I was already mentioning, uh, since this is the SEL, this is the VTEX leatherette. Um, it does a decent job of imitating and it looks very nice. Now checking out our cabin materials, this is what I would consider typical for the class. So what you'll have is a soft touch plastic that runs across your upper portions, um, as well as the extreme upper portions kind of have a different texture to it, if you can see that. Um, dropping down here, we have some different trim, uh, depending on which type of model you choose. It's silver on this SEL. And then going down to the lower areas, of course, these are hard touch as expected, but everything feels very, very solid in that typical Volkswagen way. Also in that typical Volkswagen way, you will have push button start on all but the base model located here on the dash. Now what you are looking at right now is one of my favorite features of the Tiguan, and that's Volkswagen's digital cockpit system. Um, now this is pretty much like Audi's virtual cockpit system, just with a few um, limitations to the design, so it's a little less customizable, but you still have the ability to do things like change the view here, where you'll drop down your gauges down to the bottom corners and have like a full screen map. And then you can also, of course, scroll through a wide assortment of information right up through here. Now this is standard on just the SEL trim and the SEL premium trim. Um, the lower trims have analog gauges with a smaller multi-function display. Now coming back to the steering wheel, of course you do have electric power assisted steering and it is nicely leather wrapped on all but the very base model. Uh, as far as the steering wheel itself, it does have the latest Volkswagen design with a nice flat bottom. Uh, and if you go for the SEL trim or higher starting in 2020, you'll now have a heated steering wheel and you activate that right over here in your main display. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the storage here. So starting out with our center console here, um, it isn't really huge, but it actually is very deep and does have a felt lining down at the bottom. And then in front of that, we have two large cup holders that are deep uh, and also a little storage area right there. And then up in the front, most importantly, you do have a large uh, storage place with a rubber lining. You have two charging USBs, an aux jack, and a 12 volt outlet. Now, I don't know if you can make it out here, but you can see it's Qi is written onto this rubber pad, and that's because you have wireless phone charging, which is surprisingly standard on all but the very base model. Now coming back here to the shifter, this is just a traditional shifter as you can see. Uh, pull back for drive, you can go to the right if you want to shift manually right here. However, there are not any paddle shifters on the steering wheel on any of the trims, even if you go for the R-Line. And then when we go into reverse, you will find a standard backup camera across the entire range. It does get upgraded as have parking sensors when you get to the SEL level. And then if you go for the SEL Premium R-Line, then you'll get upgraded to a 360 degree camera system. And next to the shifter, you have an electronic parking brake. All right, now moving on up here to our climate controls. The vast majority of the models will come with this setup. This is a dual zone automatic setup, which all but the base model will have. As you can see, it's very simple to use with three large knobs and all of your zones right across the top there. Uh, additionally, you will notice that Volkswagen throws in three stage heated seats on all but the very base trim level, which is a nice touch. Um, however, ventilated seats are not available on any of the models. All right, so now that brings us up here to our audio system. Now, almost all of the trim levels do come with a six speaker audio system, but if you choose the very top end model, that's where you'll get a nine speaker Fender audio system. Now, since this is the SEL trim level, we'll go ahead and sample that six speaker sound system. Over 
overall sound quality is definitely pretty good. Um, and really the only thing I have to complain about is just like many other Volkswagens, um, if you're OCD, this button actually spins around the power, so you'll have to make sure to take an extra lap if you want to keep it always in the upright position. All right, so now we are here at the infotainment system. Now there are two different displays in this vehicle. The very base model comes with a six and a half inch one, and then everything else comes with this eight inch display. So this does have the latest Volkswagen software, and as you can see, you have your apps and stuff laid out. It ha bears a strong resemblance to the latest MMI touch display that comes in the Audi models. And then as far as your graphics and responsiveness, it certainly does a very good job and has some kind of neat animations. Now what you're looking at here is your navigation system. Uh, this is included on the SEL trim level and the SEL premium R-Line trim level. Um, and as you can see, it does look um, you know, like your typical Volkswagen and Audi map display. Uh, one thing to be aware of though is that you cannot display the map both here and on your digital cockpit simultaneously. I guess that's a little something to keep reserved for the just the Audi models. And then as far as the last thing I'm going to point out is that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard equipment on all of the trim levels. Now moving on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror with three Homelink Universal remotes on the SEL trim level. And also on the SEL trim level and above, you'll find a standard panoramic moonroof. So as you can see, this is a very large moonroof and you do have a kind of transparent sunshade that is power. And it goes all the way back past the second row headrest. And of course, the front portion does open up with a windscreen. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for the front part of the cabin in this 2020 Tiguan. So now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason, who will check out all the back areas. Now hopping to the rear seat of this Tiguan, obviously this is a very important feature of any car in this segment, uh, and I'm happy to report that you do have a pretty good uh, feature set in this model. So here in the center we do have uh, rear vents that comes on the SEL trims and higher, and then down below that we have a charging USB port as well as a 12 volt outlet. However, I do want to point out that there are no heated rear seat options. And, you know, as far as the space itself is concerned, I have 37 inches of rear leg room and 39 inches of rear head room, uh, which is pretty much on par with most in the class. Um, so behind rear seating position, I have about six to seven inches of rear leg room, and my feet do have a place to slide up underneath the seat. Um, but one thing I do kind of want to point out is that this seat, I don't know, it seems pretty exceptionally uh, hard back here, but maybe that's just my personal preference. Um, but other than that, you should be very comfortable back here. Now one of the unique things about this Volkswagen Tiguan is that it can be available with a third row. Uh, typically most of the class do not have that option. Um, so let's just go ahead and get back there and see what it's like. This particular model does have one. Um, so you just fold the seat down like that. And getting back here. Uh, of course, this isn't going to be a, a very spacious third row. It's not going to be a very elegant getting into the third row. Um, this is pretty much for emergency purposes only. I don't really know how else to describe it. Um, but I actually am kind of pleasantly surprised that my feet do have a little bit of a space to slide up under the seat. Um, and you do have a cup holder on the left side. Now walking up to the tailgate, it is going to be power on the SEL trims and higher, and it is hands-free on that top-end SEL premium R-line. So just push the button to open it up. And once inside of the Tiguan's uh, cargo area, you are going to be very pleasantly surprised with the amount of space it has to offer since it's at the top of its class. It has 38 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats, and that expands all the way to 75 cubic feet if you fold them. Um, like I mentioned, that is larger than most in this class. And as far as how they finished it back here, uh, it is finished pretty nicely. We have a spare tire up underneath of the floor here, as well as little levers to fold the second row seats.
Now the passenger seat is of course manually adjusting across all of the models and in front of the passenger you do have a, a surprisingly large glove box. This is pretty massive if I have to say uh, and it does have a CD player inside. A lot of you will be happy about that. And up top we do have a sun visor with a mirror and light and it does also detach. Um, it does not extend though. Well anyway guys, that sums up all the rear areas of this Tiguan. So let's go ahead and take it out on the road and see how it compares to its rivals like the RAV4. So that's getting up to about 60 miles an hour in this 2020 Volkswagen Tig 1. Um, power, I would say, is pretty good. Um, definitely in this category of vehicle, that felt pretty strong. Yeah. Um, now, as far as the horsepower number, this is a 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder, and we have 184 horsepower. So that's roughly right in line with what most of the competition has. but. This is a little bit more torque rich. It has 221 pound feet of torque. So usually we're below 200. Uh, and I think I can feel the difference there. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that acceleration was kind of a little bit of a big difference, you know, than most in the class because, you know, we will talk about this later, but most in this class have the CVT, um, which really makes their accelerations feel a lot slower um, than that acceleration. Right, and since he's mentioning it, this is an 8-speed automatic transmission. Um, you know, that is certainly a pro for some of you guys over top of the continuously variable transmission that some of the competition has, or perhaps a 6-speed automatic. So it's uh, about as good as you can ask for in this class. Another thing that I do kind of want to point out here is that, you know, I wouldn't call this engine um, as refined as something like the Honda CRV, as a refined and quiet, but it definitely is a lot quieter than stuff like the Toyota RAV4, um, you know, in terms of the amount of sound entering the cabin from the engine noise. And I guess while we are talking about the sound level, I will get out our decibel reader here and get a reading of us going around 50 miles an hour. Take it up to 50. All right, we're at 50. Looks like we're looking at around uh, 59 decibels here. Um, you know, which is, you know, with the rest of the class, I think it was running the Mazda CX-5, if I remember correctly, it was around 56 decibels, so that's a little bit louder than the Mazda CX-5. It is a very windy day as well. Yeah, that is something to keep in mind here is that, yeah, it's extremely windy um, and different road, you know, noises and stuff like that. But it does seem pretty quiet, to be honest. You know, and uh, just kind of cruising along here, we're going 55 miles an hour. Um, and really, any car in this segment, you know, I've said it time and time again, any car in this segment, its focus needs to be to be extremely comfortable for all the family because that's what people, you know, that's what they buy now as their family vehicles. Um, and I have to say, this Tiguan has an exceptionally good ride. I think it takes a little bit of influence from, you know, Audi because it does have a really, really good ride. And other than, you know, the rear seats, I thought they were pretty, pretty stiff. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I really am not going to see if there's going to be any issues in terms of comfort in this Tiguan because it is very good, especially for this class of vehicle. that acceleration there um, 
you know, for reference, it went up to 69 decibels, which I think honestly matches the CX-5. I'm definitely very pleased with the 8-speed automatic in this vehicle. Um, it really responds well to when you need, you know, more throttle. Um, you don't have any type of weird, like, some of the, some of the cars are uh, tuned for just maximum fuel economy. And if you just want like a small increase in acceleration, uh, sometimes you have to really put your foot down because the, it just tries to ignore yeah. you, but that's not the case here. It's, it definitely feels very responsive. Now, uh, you know, he was kind of mentioning there that, you know, the transmission wasn't geared towards fuel economy. Um, so this is definitely not going to be at the top of the class in terms of its efficiency here because for the front wheel drive model, it's rated at 22 city, 29, highway 25 combined um, if you go for the all-wheel drive it's going to be 20 city 27 highway 23 combined um, you know pretty much goes without saying that's a lot less than most in this class that you know we just got out of the CRV the CRV is rated at 29 combined so that's a 6 mpg decrease over that but you are getting you know significant powertrain upgrades over that I think and also on the subject of fuel economy this does have an auto start stop system, so we'll see how quickly it starts up. Very good. Um, especially for a mainstream vehicle, this is one of the best auto start stop systems I've felt. Um, you know, of course, since they do have common componentry, uh, but it, it does feel Audi like in the fact yeah. that it restarts uh, lightning fast. Overall, the uh, 2020 Tiguan is certainly a pleasant vehicle to drive. Um, this is only, I think, the second Volkswagen that we've driven. I drove one Atlas um, once, a, once upon a time. Um, you know, but this is really a very comfortable vehicle. And I think that is the overarching theme of this, is comfort. This is certainly designed for the family. Um, you know, it's designed for the American family as well. You know, with uh, it has a lot of space, more than most in the class, and uh, comfort that exceeds most in the class. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing. Uh, so for the following MSRPs, these are going to be with front wheel drive, um, with optional all wheel drive. So for the S, you have $24,945 as a starting price. SE is $27,095. SEL, which is what we have here, is $32,245. And then finally, you have the SEL Premium R-Line. That actually comes standard with all-wheel drive, uh, but that's going to ring in at $38,795. Now, we do also have all-wheel drive checked off. We have the third row seating for $595. Auto dimming rear view mirror for $325, um, the optional floor mats for $265, and then a first aid kit for $99. Um, and then all told, when you add in the destination charge of $1,020, this particular tester as equipped comes in at $35,869, um, which you know is pretty much in line with a lot of its competition, especially. Um, in its highest end trim level, it's really quite in line with a lot of them. And I do think that this particular test drive equipped has a lot of value for its $35,000 price point. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this in depth look at the 2020 Volkswagen Tiguan SEL. If you've made it this far, hopefully that means you enjoyed the video. So be sure to help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.